So you're thinking about mounting your TV. You probably have a lot of different questions and aren't sure exactly where to start. Mounting a TV can be a relatively simple process, but there are a lot of different things to keep in mind when doing so. The last thing you wanna do is mount your TV in the wrong place, have a completely off-centered or worst case scenario, fall off the wall if you do something wrong. In this video, I'm gonna give you seven different tips for mounting a TV in your home. This will include things such as mounting location, type of mount, safety, and best practices to save you some time and money. I'm not gonna cover the step-by-step -step process for actually mounting a TV because I've already done a video on this and that'll be linked in the description. It is a little old though, so let me know if you guys wanna see something that's updated. So the first thing you wanna think about is the location that you wanna mount the TV. This can be a super complex topic because there are many different aspects to keep in mind here. The number one cardinal sin in the AV enthusiast world is mounting a TV above a fireplace. By all means possible, you wanna avoid doing this, but I do understand that sometimes there aren't really any other options. For instance, in my living room, a majority of the people that have seen the inside of my home have asked, why are you not mounting the TV above the fireplace? Well, there are a few reasons for this. Number one, it would be way too high for someone sitting down to comfortably watch the TV for a long duration. It's not great for your neck if you're looking up even at a slight angle for extended periods of time. I like it when my neck doesn't hurt. I would also like it if you would like this video. You know, if you'd like to. Two, I have a ton of devices in my living room. My Nvidia Shield, PS5, Xbox Series X, and a few others that I swap out occasionally. Storing these devices and making it look good would be extremely difficult without an entertainment center. And three, if you use a fireplace frequently, depending how the home was built, the heat from the fireplace can damage the TV and shorten its lifespan. So I decided to mount it on this wall over here. The adjacent wall has blinds, which are a little annoying if it's still daylight out, but I plan to put up some blackout curtains that will solve this problem entirely. Mine is relatively simple, since I decided to not mount above the fireplace. Other living rooms might be more challenging though. Okay, that was super long-winded, but now let's get into some other things to keep in mind. Similar to avoiding fireplaces, you want to avoid mounting a TV too high up on a wall. The ideal TV height aligns the center of the TV with your eyes. Now, this isn't always possible for various reasons, but it's way better than mounting a TV way too high on an otherwise empty wall. If you have reclining seats and use them often, then it's not as bad to have the TV a bit higher than seated eye level. Speaking of reclining seats, if you're in the market for some awesome home theater style chairs, check out these Valencia Oslo Ultimate Seats. These things have electric recline, lumbar support, and headrest tilting, and are extremely comfortable. I did a full video on them a few months ago, and I spoke very highly of them in that video, and my opinion hasn't changed. They're still awesome, and I love using them months later. Anyways, mounting the TV where the center is right at, or just slightly above eye level, will provide a more comfortable viewing experience for your neck. Because, you know, you don't wanna just be doing this the entire time while watching a movie eventually your neck's gonna start cramping. Also, this may seem obvious, but you might need to adjust the height based on your entertainment center or anything going below the TV. Ideally, I would have mounted my TV a little lower, but my entertainment center is taller than most and I needed room for a bigger soundbar or center channel speaker to sit on top of it too. I actually cut the legs off of my entertainment center to get it a little lower to the ground. It actually works better now. My cats can no longer crawl underneath to mess with cables, knock around toys, etc. If you have a soundbar you'd like to use, you can also mount it along with the TV, whether it's mounted directly to the wall or attached to the TV with additional brackets. I have a video on that as well. The next major thing to consider is the type of mount that you want to use. There are four main types of mounts. Each one has a slightly different use case and your personal preferences can play in here as well. The first one is flat or fixed mounts. These offer no angle adjustments and the TV screen is parallel with the wall. This gets the TV the closest to the wall and is best to use when you can position the TV at the ideal height, which again is where the center of the screen is close to eye level when sitting down. The second type is a tilt mount. These allow you to tilt the screen down if the TV is positioned higher than what's ideal. And you can usually tilt them up as well, which can make it easier to connect cables or disconnect cables at some point. You'll usually use these on a bedroom wall or when putting a TV above a fireplace. I actually used a tilt mount in my master bedroom for my TV. The third type is an articulating or full motion mount. These mounts let you pull the TV away from the wall and angle it to one side or the other and tilt it up and down. I mainly use these because it's easier to connect or disconnect cables and I can get better shots for video production and pictures for my websites. 
The downside with full motion or articulating mounts is that they sit out from the wall a bit and aren't as clean looking from a side angle, but that's personal preference. And the last type is a pull down or fireplace mount. These are actually really cool. They allow you to mount a TV above a fireplace or mantle, then you can easily pull the TV out and down where it clears the mantle. This helps with the height issue significantly, but likely won't put a TV at the most ideal height. Still, it's way better than looking up at your TV the entire time. Mantle Mount was one of the original companies to make these types of mounts, and they are really cool and extremely useful products. I'd love to make a video on one someday. There are other types of mounts as well, but these are far less common, so I'm not really gonna mention them. But now that you know the different options available, think about where your TV is gonna be mounted, the height that it can be mounted at, if you need it to tilt down or up or to the side, if you'd like it to rotate one way or another, like these these key factors are going to help you decide which mount is going to be the best option for you. I also have some recommendations in the description if you're interested. The next thing is to make sure that the mount is secured to both the wall and the TV. If you live in the United States, then the inside of your home is likely drywall attached to wooden studs. Many older homes in the US were built with plaster walls, which can make finding studs a bit more challenging. It's ideal to attach the mount to the wall using studs. These are the long wooden 2x4s running vertically behind the drywall. However, if you are using a flat or tilt mount, with a TV weighing under 70-ish pounds, then you can get away with just attaching to drywall. But you do have to be smart about it. You should use stronger drywall anchors, and it would be smart to probably use more than just four screws. Typically, you attach a mount to the wall with four lag screws. You'll wanna mark the center of the stud on both sides of the mount, pre-drill a hole into the drywall and stud, then secure the mount to the wall with lag screws. What I see more often than not, though, is that one side of the mount has studs close enough to attach to, but the other side doesn't. So two lag screws going into the studs on one side, then two drywall anchors with screws on the other side. This should be enough to securely hold the mount and TV to a wall without damaging anything. Now, if you're mounting into concrete or brick walls, you'll need to use concrete anchors. These are typically provided with the mount. Here's another tip when you're struggling to get studs on both sides of the mount though. If there's a stud behind where the mount is going, but there's no slot for the lag screw to go, you can simply drill a hole in the mount itself. Just make sure you're using a drill bit specifically meant for metal. A wooden drill bit isn't gonna work for this, or it may work, but it's gonna dull the tip out and really not be useful in the future. Continuing on with securing the mount to the wall, you'll wanna make sure that the screws attaching the brackets to the back of the TV are the correct length and that you don't over tighten them. There are four screws in total that hold the bracket or brackets to the back of a TV. The mount should come with a large package of different size and length screws to use. A majority of the time, one of these options is going to work for your TV unless you just have a weird TV that uses different size screws or something like that. But when you are tightening the screws on the back, I suggest that you hand tighten them with a normal screwdriver or a power drill with a torque control set to a very low setting. I personally do this. Most modern TVs have mastered this design point where it's actually quite difficult to damage the screen itself by using screws that are too long. Many times the heads of the screws would rather snap than continue going forward into where the screen actually is but it never hurts to be safe here. For finding the correct length of screw, you can use one of the longer screws in the provided pack to determine how long the inserts are. Then you can choose the smaller screw that will have a lot of bite into the insert, but won't be too long. And the last tip is to hide your cables if possible and do some cable management. Make this look pretty. You've put a lot of work into this and it should really look nice at the end. I see it all the time where somebody's done a great job mounting their TV, but then they have an ugly power cable and some HDMI cables just dangling down the wall. Yes, it's a small thing and you could probably get away with it in your bedroom, but not in your living room or your main living space. You wanna hide those cables as much as humanly possible. I suggest using a power bridge kit. These things are super convenient and a breeze to install. There's one end that will go behind the TV and another end that goes at the same height as normal outlets then a power cable connects them together behind the wall. There's also a slot where you can run all of your cables through to get them behind the wall and out of view. I have a full video on this product and how to install it as well. So if you're not able to cut holes in your wall, then you do have another option. And these are called cable trays. These are basically plastic trays that kind of attach to the wall 
and you can run your cables through those or they kind of just cover up the cables so they can't be seen. Sometimes you can purchase the cable trays to be like the same color as your wall and sometimes you'll just have to paint them to match the color of the wall as best you can. But those are a good option if you just want to place them on and then pull them off later on when you move out and they don't have any damage to the wall or anything like that. Now if you're putting different devices in an entertainment center then I suggest picking up some velcro cable ties and some adhesive cable management clips. This makes it a lot easier to clean up the mess of cables that people try to shove behind their entertainment centers. I hope you found these tips helpful. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.